Dateline, March 27, 1990. Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Dayton, Ohio. The SR 71's historic final flight. It's a heartbreak to stop doing it. Especially when I know there's, there's so many more missions to be flown yet that we'll never, we'll never do. I'll never forget that day or what Colonel Don Watkins told me in our interview. No one could predict that seven years later, the Blackbirds are once again mission ready, ready to spy on the bad guys. There's really nothing uh, that, that can touch this airplane, even though it's 30 years old. Over Air Force objections, Congress ordered two Blackbirds back into the sky. The military says it's still too expensive, $39,000 an hour to fly, and they don't need it. Satellites or other spy planes can do the job. The SR's creator, Lockheed, says, uh-uh. You need to have reconnaissance to tell you what's going on in the world so you can be prepared to fight those battles in a very short time. Very short time because the Blackbird soars three times the speed of sound. Every time I click my fingers, you're going a mile. That's pretty fast. One of the Blackbird's first secret missions could be to spy on North Korea to see if they're building nuclear facilities. We could go up there and, and look at things and then they can make an assessment. Do we really want to put a satellite up to monitor that? Is there really something going on or, or can we just use this? The Blackbird's mission is to take pictures, but the cameras on board it are much more sophisticated than this. In fact, when this jet is flying 15 miles overhead, three times the speed of sound, it could get a picture of me holding this camera. What we do is we put a radar up front and we have an antenna that hangs down about 12 inches from here. With that antenna, a military commander on the ground can see what the Blackbird is seeing at the same time. Here on the leading edge of the wing. Jay Murphy is telling us stuff that used to be classified. He's an old Blackbird pilot. Now he heads up the SR program for Lockheed. I thought that was amazing that we could take an airplane and literally been sitting on a ramp out here for five years. Nothing had been done to it. And uh, we took it apart, cleaned it up, checked out the engines, put a pilot in it, and flew it. From mothballs to Mach 3 in just a few months. We're in there. That's good. Check out the crew. These gray-haired pilots and backseaters are about twice the age of regular Air Force pilots, but they're the youngest ones around who know how to fly it. Uh, we could not meet the congressional mandates uh, unless we brought back people that had done it before. We could train the old heads in about uh, four months. It takes a year to train a new crew. Colonel Gil Luloff learned how to launch this jet 16 years ago at Beale Air Force Base north of Sacramento. This was an office, uh, the commander's office. You can see it's a ghost town today. Tony Bavacqua flew the jet in its glory years, but when the Air Force killed the SR, 1,500 jobs at Beale vanished. What we want to do is make him smoke. SR pilots still train to handle emergencies here. Tom Bowen makes sure the spacesuits prevent the crew's blood from boiling. It's a world-class weapon system. It's uh, still, as we speak, the, the fastest, highest flying airplane in the world. And General Beeler heads up the program at Beale, but that's about it for the SRs here. How can you not have a love affair with the airplane? But the general has to love his blackbirds from afar. The two Air Force jets live at Edwards Air Force Base outside Los Angeles. That's a flight simulator resharpens the crew's skills. The Air Force is no longer in charge of maintenance. Lockheed in Palmdale, California does that now. These days, the spy plan is doing more than spying. NASA snagged three SR-71s in 1990 and kept them flying while the rest slept at museums. And provides us data that you cannot get on the ground. NASA is strapping a new rocket engine called the laser on top the Blackbird. It's an experiment to see how well it really works at supersonic speeds. Well, you could actually wind up learning a lot of information from this that may be able to save lives in the future. That rocket engine will power the X-33, a test vehicle for the next generation space shuttle. The Blackbird's space-age technology developed nearly 40 years ago is keeping it alive today. But no one can say if the legendary bird will continue flying tomorrow. At Edwards Air Force Base, Michelle Hoffland, Fox 40 News. At Edwards Air Force Base, Michelle Hoffland, Fox News.